So I made a video with my iPhone 15 Pro, and this is what the result looks like. York looks different without you. I've been walking around, thinking about this distance and how I am missing, but I feel so close to you. Come on. Ever since I got this iPhone 15 Pro, I also wanted to use it to create some cinematic content to see what it is capable of because all the new features that come with this phone look like a big game changer. Not only for the content creator, but also for the independent filmmaker. Like the USB-C port that can connect with the SSD drive while shooting the video, or it allows us to shoot the 10 bits Apple ProRes Law video internally. But in this video, we will not dive into the details of the new features for this iPhone 15 Pro because I believe there are already tons of video on YouTube talking about it. Instead of talking about the phone itself, in this video, we will focus more on how to use this new iPhone 15 Pro to make the cinematic video you just saw. A few days ago, I shot this Instagram reel made with my Sony SMS3. And many people have asked me about how I made this reel and how I set up the light for the scene. So I suddenly had an idea, why not use my iPhone 15 Pro to mimic the Instagram reel that I did with the exact lighting setup, editing, and color grading in the post, and to see how the video quality comparison looks like. As you can see, compared with the video I shot with my Sony S7 III, the quality looks quite similar. If you don't really pay attention to it, you might not notice the difference. So in this video, I will show you guys how I use my iPhone 15 Pro to shoot this video. We will talk about the gear I use, the video setting, the lighting setup, and also some uh, pros and cons that you need to know to use this phone to shoot your video. So without further talk, let's jump right into it. Now the first thing we will talk about is the gear. So except for our iPhones, we also need tools to help us to shoot our video. We first need a phone cage to put our iPhone on our tripod, whether we want to put it horizontally or vertically. And the cage I use is this U-Lens Uri Pro. Even though this cage is built of plastic instead of metal, it still has multiple screws and three coat shimmer on it, so that I can put all the accessories like my SSD drive or the external monitor on it. So even if it's not the best cage you can get from the market, its price is still perfect for its quality. The tripod I use is this KNF Concept T254A, which I use for my social media work all the time. If you have been following me on social media for a while, you are probably familiar with it. Next, to shoot this video, we will use the external SSD drive to save our footage because to shoot the Apple ProRes load on our iPhone, it will run out our storage space quickly. To do that, you simply need to plug your SSD drive into your iPhone, and then the iPhone will automatically redirect your saving location into your SSD drive. And once you see the time change on your screen, your drive is successfully connected to your iPhone. And the SSD drive I use over here is my Samsung T5. To put my drive on my phone cage, I use my SSD mount holder and fix it on one of my Koshu mounts. Move on to our next gear, which is this 50nm clip-on lens filter. So basically it works by putting it in front of your iPhone camera. Then you can put different kind of lens filters in front of your lens to apply various effects on your video, like the ND filter or diffusion filter. To shoot this video, I used my one full black promise filter uh, for my shot because I wanted to soften the sharpness image that was created by my iPhone. Despite the filter size being different, I used my adapter ring to expand my clay on lens filter from 50nm to 77nm so that I can use my 77nm black promise filter that I already have to put it in front of my clay on lens filter. And if you want to learn more about the promise filter, I have already made a video for everything you need to know about it and I will put the links down below, so please feel free to check it out. But back to our topic, the last part of the gear we will discuss is the lighting gear I use. And I totally use three lights to light my scene. My after F22C, you'll know one 360 RGB light tube, and after N9. We will dive into the details of the lighting setup in just a second. But for now, let's move on to our next section, which is the video setting and app. So to get the best video quality from your iPhone, you want to ensure you nail all the video setting inside your phone. First, we go to the setting and scroll down to click the camera. You can see many options appear over here. 
first we go to the record video and choose 4K 24 frames per second. And next we go down to enable enhanced stabilization and HDR video. By allowing these two functions, not only can you get more stable footage if you shoot your shot in motion, but you also can get more dynamic range and color information for your video. Then we go down to enable the live white balance option in the bottom so that your white balance will not be changed while you are recording your video. Once you finish, we return to the previous page and click format. In the video capture section, you want to enable the Apple ProRes options and choose the coding for the log to get the best dynamic range and call the information from this iPhone. Once you finish the setting, if we go back to our homepage, click camera and click video, you can see a ProRes log options on the top. And if you click that icon, then it means we are shooting in log mode. For the lens option, the footage you shot that can be used is from 30mm to 77mm. Outside this range, the image will become super noisy and barely useful in the post. So after all the things we set up, if you are a regular user, you can start shooting your video directly from your camera app. But if you are a professional shooter, then you guys probably notice once I use the log mode to shoot my video, my image becomes flat. And there's no display the option that can help us to convert our video screen into Rec. 709 color space. And to solve this issue, I use this Blackmagic camera app to allow me to record my video. This app is made by the Blackmagic Design Company, and it's free to download. And basically, it's the app we're gonna use to shoot our video today. Once you open the app, you can see there are so many video settings we can choose from inside this app. And basically, what we want to do is click setting. We go to the LUT section, and here we have the display LUT options and LUT section. So by default, this app doesn't provide the LUT option for us to choose. So even if we enable the display LUT options, our image will still look flat while recording. So I made a LUT in Dimension Resolve by myself to convert my uh, display screen to the Rex Mode color space. Once I transfer my LUT file into my phone, we selected the LUT I made from the LUT, LUT options. Then now you can see our screen convert our Apple low footage with rest of our gamma and display with the color again. If you guys are interested in downloading the Rex of Online conversion LUT I use inside this video, I will put the free download link down below, so please feel free to check it out. Uh, but back to our topic, before we start shooting, there are still some settings we want to set up inside this app, which we will start from our record options. So inside this app, they also provide different shooting options to record your video. The code that you want to choose is the Apple ProRes 422. Uh, the resolution is 4K which we already said. And for the color space, make sure you set that Apple Low HDR. Then once we finish our codec setting, we go back to our setting menu, go to the media section and click Save Clip 2. Then you want to click Files and save your clip inside your external hard drive. And once you finish, you click on the camera icon on the button and back to the shooting mode. Then now, the last two settings you want to do are to lock your shutter speed and white balance so that they won't keep changing while you are recording your video. Here for the shutter speed, because of our frame rate is 24 frames per second, we want to set our shutter speed to 148 and click the lock icon to lock our shutter speed. For the white balance, I would like to put it to 3200K to shoot our video, and then I click the lock icon to lock my white balance again. And here are two significant things you guys should keep in mind. The first thing is inside this app, you will only have four lenses options you can choose from, which start from 30mm, 24mm, 77mm, and your front lens. You basically can change your focal lens like you change in the Apple camera app, so sometimes it's kind of inconvenient to use because after the 24mm, the only option left is the 77mm. So sometimes if you don't have enough space allow you to move around to shoot your shot by 77mm on the set, you either need to go back to 24mm or go to the Apple camera app to choose another lens option to shoot your video. And the second thing is the focus issue. So when you use the autofocus feature, you can notice the focus could be jumping around or can even focus on the face. This issue could be really serious while you are using the 77mm. So if you are like me mostly shooting by yourself, the focus issue is something you need to deal with. The best solution is to find one extra person to put a focus for you. Otherwise, you might find your footage on focus file in the post. Now, this app also includes many different functions. For example, the exposure assistant, the grid or ratio guideline, and more to make it feel like you are really using a professional camera to shoot your video. Due to the time, I'm not going to dive into all the functions inside this video, but I will put the download links down below, so if you guys want to experience the app by yourself, please feel free to check it out. 
So now move on to our next section, which is the lighting setup. So the lighting setup inside this video is actually kind of straightforward. I mainly just utilize the particle light in the environment I shot without too much lighting setup. And we can separate it into four parts. The first is our elevator scene, and the second is the memory fuzz cut scene. Still, because of this part, I use some of the old footage I shot with my professional camera, so we will skip this part. The third part would be me in the entryway, and the last part would be the scene of my mom standing in front of the kitchen area making food. So let's start with the first scene in the elevator. As you guys could see, due to the reflection, we don't have too much space to place our light. Even my camera reflection need to be covered by my body. So for our wide shot and close up shot inside this scene, I made myself look up after pushing the elevator button so that I can utilize the particle light inside the elevator to light my face. Otherwise, if I make myself look in the front, the top light will make my face look terrible. Lastly, I turn on the light outside of the elevator to give my image some depth in the back so that not only can it give more depth to my image, but it can also add some ambient lights for my shot. For the close up shot where I push the button, I simply put my light tube on the top to meet me the light in the elevator. Now move on to our next scene, the entryway scene. For the lighting setup over here, I put my light tube with one layer diffusion inside my bathroom as my key light to light my face. And I put my end light on top of the shoe camping and made it bump to the ceiling to add soft fill light on my shadow side. And let's give it more depth for our image. I simply add my small light lamp to put it in the back as a practical light to give my image more depth. Then last, for the scene in front of the kitchen, I turn on all the oven lights in my kitchen and use my light to bounce to the ceiling on the opposite side to add more fuel lights for my subject. For the close-up shot in the kitchen, I simply put my end light with one layer diffusion to light my face so that my subject's face could look more flattering and have more better contrast. As you can see, I only use a simple lighting setup for most of my scene except the entryway scene. Other than that, I really just use water available light that my environment gives me and put the LED light in the same direction as my particle light to make sure I get the exposure right. And in my opinion, I think if you can get your exposure right, this iPhone 15 Pro can give you the really smart result for your image. Now move on to our last section which is the color grading workflow section. So for this section, I really just want to show to the people who don't have the experience to deal with the log footage before, for the people who are not familiar with the color grading workflow for the Apple Log inside the editing software. And the editing software I'm going to use today is DaVinci Resolve. Even though I'm using the studio version, which is the paid version, Blackmagic actually offers the free version that everybody can download. So if you are not a DaVinci Resolve user yet, then I will put the website link down below, so please feel free to check it out. Now, when you finish the editing on your timeline and want to start color grading your footage, your footage still looks flat and doesn't have the color on it. To properly convert your footage and put the gamma on it, you want to go to the effect library and type S transform. Then you drag the effect to the last node on your node tree. Inside the S transform section, for the version you want to choose the latest version which is here is the SS 1.3. And for the input transform, you would like to choose Apple Log. And for the output transform, you would want to choose Rec 709. Once you finish the setting, you should see now your video is with the color on it. If you use the display LED I mentioned while shooting, then the color you saw on your iPhone screen will be the same as you see now on your monitor. And after you properly convert your footage into Rec 9 color space, you can start to do the adjustment in front of your SS Transform node and color grade your footage. Unfortunately for this video, I won't dive into the color grading process. Still, if you are interested in learning how I color grade my footage or how you can use my LUD to quickly get the color grading result like the reel I made, I will put my color grading tutorial and LUD pack link down below. So if you guys are interested, please feel free to check it out. And here you have it. After this video, I hope you will understand more about how to make some automatic video with your iPhone 15 Pro. And maybe you can utilize the knowledge I shared in this video for your personal project. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today and maybe you can take something away from it. If you guys like this video, please don't hesitate to click that subscribe button down below and give me a thumbs up. I really want to hear about you guys' uh, experience to shoot by your iPhone 15 Pro. So please feel free to comment down below and I will try to reply as soon as possible. So it's the wrap for today's video. I'm Daniel Chang. I will see you guys in the following video. Peace.